Hey everyone, my name is Wahid Lutfi. Welcome to my Web University free education videos. In this um, video, I'm going to uh, show you how to use the F statement in general and also compare the F statement between PowerShell and Windows batch scripts. So let's get started. I'm gonna uh, first go through a slideshow. And as you can see, the flowchart that I'm having in front of you um, or in front of me in this case, and when you're watching it, you can see it too. And the F statement basically uh, has a flowchart. And as you can see on the top here, if the condition uh, that you're evaluating becomes true, then the F code um, statement or statements combination of those statements will be executed and the um, result will be just displayed on the screen or um, displayed on um, the monitor or uh, written to a file or something. So and the outcome, the output is as a result of the condition when the condition becomes true, this um, uh, code and get executed. This code could be a number of um, statements one or more uh, statements, could be expression, could be a uh, function calls, could be Boolean operators, comparison, another nested F statement, uh, another uh, for statement, while statement, function calls, anything could be within this F uh, code. So it is not just one uh, uh, statement. It could be also in terms of operating system, it could be command uh, from the operating system to be executed. And then if the condition is false, and then the else uh, code part gets executed. So if the condition, for example, you say if uh, x is equal to uh, 5, then um, the, when the value of x is equal to 5, this condition becomes true. And then uh, the result will show up whatever you say print uh, numbers greater than 5 they, or equal 5, then it will print that one. Otherwise, it's going to be the, the else part. So it's very easy in flowcharts. I'm gonna go to the next statement and uh, the next uh, um, PowerPoint presentation. In this case, I'm going to uh, show you um, Windows F statement um, by comparing between Windows batch scripts and PowerShell. So uh, both a batch script uh, has a F statement and PowerShell has a F statement. We're going to discuss uh, the syntax, semantics, and how you're going to use them within your um, batch scripting or PowerShell scripting. And we're going to um, uh, show the comparison, the difference uh, between them. So in general, we're going to talk about uh, now, let's, um, we're going to compare the F statement in Windows batch script and PowerShell. Let's take a look at the basic syntax of the F statement. In batch script, uh, the FS statement has the following basic syntax. As you can see, I wrote uh, this detail already. F condition, so the condition is between uh, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, and then I start the left parenthesis and then uh, do some statements. These commands that you could run could be function, could be uh, other um, comparison of FS statement, for statement. Uh, looping and then a nested F statement, could be anything, uh, could be a function calls, could be command line of uh, the operating system. So you're checking for this condition, like uh, the flowchart shows, if the, the condition becomes true, then this executed. Notice that there's no else part here. So this is just a very generic form that it says if the condition becomes true, Otherwise, it is going to drop the line uh, here. Whatever is the next statement here, that will be executed. But um, if you have an else part, then you just have an else, and then you also have um, that um, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, and a list of commands. Later on, I'm going to show you on the actual script that I have F statement with else combination, so you can learn both of them. In PowerShell, on the other hand, the F condition, uh, you're putting it in within left parenthesis, right parenthesis, as well as your start the brace. Um, at the brace, start the commands that you will be getting into a loop to say, not a loop uh, within a statement of uh, just um, running these statement one after the other one. 
a loop is when, when you do a for statement or a while statement, but if condition, when this condition is true, it starts uh, this uh, command one first, and then it's uh, command two. And if it follows more than command n number of commands, this uh, is, uh, you can have as many as you want. So in batch scripting, the if statement is associated commands or enclosed in parentheses on the same line. Whereas in PowerShell, the if statement is enclosed in parentheses in associated commands or enclosed in curly braces on the um, followed line. So this is uh, curly braces, the followed line are all kind of um, within this scope of this um, brace, um, uh, braces. Uh, now let's compare all the comparison operators in both languages, which is batch scripting in PowerShell. Batch script uses the uh, two uh, double equal sign, as you can see, two double equal sign here. Operator for both a string and integer data type comparison. So uh, if a string is um, and the two uh, variable that you're comparing is uh, strings, then it's going to use the same equal uh, sign as well as for numbers uh, or integers, you can compare it. So for example, here I'm saying if percentage and num percentage is equal, equal five, then start brace and say equal the number is five. When the value of um, variable num is uh, evaluated, which you are putting this one with double percentage uh, sign around the num variable, that is kind of uh, dereferencing the value of it. So when it uh, evaluate this uh, value, if the value becomes five, five is equal five, then it is gonna echo the number is equal five. Very simple. And then in PowerShell, uh, we use uh, the dash EQ for equal uh, equality, and then equal for integer comparison and dash EQ, as well as the dash like. Dash like is like Oracle um, like a kind of argument in the word clause that you're comparison with um, anything that matches a wildcard character. So the like uh, in PowerShell is very nice because it allows you to do much more than just one uh, type of uh, string or characters uh, there. So if uh, matches any of those um, uh, string, it will just uh, return a result. If in uh, this example, you can see if a dollar sign num equal five, the right host and the number is equal five. Notice the uh, brackets, uh, parentheses around the dollar sign num, and then the variable, uh, in order to dereference the value of num, we are using in PowerShell a dollar sign, uh, similar to bash shell scripting. So um, you use a dollar sign num, equal uh, to five, and then you're getting uh, the value of um, num. If num is equal five, five and dash equal five is going to return true. And then and the statement write dash host is gonna write and the number is five. Write dash host is just going to um, be similar to like echo or print or other statement in PowerShell that you could just uh, print a string into uh, a display or console or a file or something. So write dash host and the number is five. And notice again, the left uh, braces, right braces, is going to just uh, show that information that is inside the PowerShell statement that you're going to execute. In batch scripting to access the value of a variable, we use the percentage character. And again, and the percentage characters is to use uh, this one to dereference it. So if you say f uh, percentage num percentage is gonna just uh, look at the value of num, and then it says if num is gonna replace that one to five. If five is equal five, then it says it's gonna say echo dollar sign. Uh, on the other hand, on the PowerShell, we use the dollar sign, one dollar sign. And if you just use uh, a percentage to dereference it, you have to use uh, two percentage in batch, batch uh, scripting. But if you're echoing, you can do echo dollar sign path or echo, uh, I'm sorry, echo uh, percentage path or echo uh, percentage um, 
any other variable, you can display it. But when you want to dereference the value, you want to use it between the two percentage symbol. When I say dollar sign, dollar sign is for uh, PowerShell and um, Unix uh, like uh, shell scripting. Unix and Linux like. <clears throat> in PowerShell, to access the value of a variable, we use the dollar sign character. We already discussed that one. I was just jumping ahead. Uh, so you can see if dollar sign num is equal five, then write host, the number is equal five. And as we can see, the syntax of the to access the value of variable is different in both languages. In one language in PowerShell, we use dollar sign and then the batch scripting, we use um, percentage around the variable. So um, batch scripting uses, uh, batch uh, script also uses EQU, which is e uh, e equality, and not equal to and less than uh, uh, LSS for less, um, less or equal LEQ and uh, greater than uh, GTR and uh, greater or equal to GEQ. Uh, so those operator, you can do it. And as a comparison, I'm showing you the uh, percentage in num and less LSS uh, five. This one could be also showing to just do the comparison. And some symbols um, like um, programming languages like Python, Shell, and other ones, you can use the uh, less than sign uh, to do that one or uh, greater sign or greater or equal sign, those symbols as well, but uh, not in um, batch scripting here. So in PowerShell, uh, we use uh, EQ for uh, dash EQ, dash not equal. So you can see this, this one is dash EQ for equal, not equal, and uh, dash NE, dash less than, and dash LT dash le less or equal dash gt greater or uh, greater than uh, and then uh, greater or equal dash ge operator for comparison so in this case if we say if dollar sign num is dash lt five meaning that's less than five if dollar sign num is less than five then we are going to write a write host statement here and then say the number is less than five in batch scripting, the uh, F demo the one dot batch example that I wrote, I'm going to demonstrate that one uh, also from the script directory uh, later on. And then you can see here, this is the actual script that I wrote. Uh, at echo off, meaning that don't just uh, write the echo it itself. So within your batch scripting, you could put the at echo off as a directive that it tells it, don't echo the echo itself. But then um, we are going to uh, show two numbers. First, we set number uh, num1 is equal 5. And then when num1 is set to 5, uh, we are going to echo num1 is equal to. And then this is going to basically just say uh, num1 is equal 5. And then now we're going to do a F statement. A percentage num1 percentage is equal 5. Notice the whole thing is in one line. Um, we're not having like a bracket or something. That is the syntax of the F statement in batch script. So you say if uh, num uh, is equal five within the percentage, then the start bracket, you're going to execute the condition when this is true. The value of num was five. Else we're going to execute this statement when the num is not equal five. So that is uh, going to be executed. Similarly, we set the value uh, num1 this time to 20, then we're going to display it, and then we're going to compare it. If comparison of uh, num1 is equal five, since it's 20, the echo in num1 is not going to be uh, true. So it's gonna come to the else part. And the else part is gonna say echo num1 is not equal to five, but it is uh, equal to 20. So this uh, script, I'm going to demonstrate it uh, also, uh, and I'll show you at the uh, lab section. So let's just go to the next part. In PowerShell, we must uh, set the execution policy as shown below to make sure our PowerShell script runs. So in PowerShell, um, you cannot run a PowerShell without uh, a set execution policy to remote side or uh, unrestricted or something. So you have to make sure you're allowed to run that one. And then in order to see the result, 
you can run the get dash execution policy. And get the execution policy will show that uh, you set it to remote sign and you're allowed to run it. And this is uh, runs as an administrator. Uh, as you can see, I said you have to have a, a admin privileges or access. And then and once you have that one, you run it once and then you're set for the profile. You don't have to do it every session. So in PowerShell, the fdemo1.ps1, uh, actually, uh, this is, yeah, this is uh, I, I execution of that statement, uh, the uh, PowerShell script that I wrote called fdemo1.powershell1. As you can see, I'm here uh, typing the content of it. So on Windows and uh, PowerShell, you have the type command, similar to Linux cat command. You can um, type the uh, content of it. You say type fdemo1.ps1. It shows all the lines. And in order to execute it, since I'm on this directory PowerShell, I have to put a dot slash backward slash. This is a Windows backward slash. On Unix, it's a forward slash and Windows is a backward slash. Dot slash f demo one dot ps1. Said since we set up the execution policy already to remote sign, and then uh, it's already going to run the command and it's going to get the number is five. So that is also going to be displayed at the demonstration section at the lab time. Now let's look over some more examples. The fdemo2.batch script. And the batch script thing, again, I'm setting the echo off, but here notice I'm using the set with slash p. Slash p on batch script is saying prompt the user. And then whatever you prompt the user, please enter your name will be stored uh, uh, the value of it will be stored into this variable name. So the user after this colon is going to type the uh, name, then the name will be stored into name as a variable. This is a set as a local uh, variable as well as global uh, variables are all um, displayed on uh, Linux as set and when Windows is similar. And so this variable will be uh, created at the time that you run the program and then the value will be set to name. Uh, so the name, and then we are going to do in batch scripting with a percentage around the variable name. And then you can see that we're comparing that, that variable within a string. So, and then compare uh, the equality symbol is equal. And this is two string. So notice the case sensitivity, what he, uh, is different than Wahid with lowercase w. So uh, you cannot just have um, uh, the same name uh, with uh, uh, one character different than this string, it will not match. If it's all five of these characters are the same with w as uppercase, then it will match. Then it's gonna say, hello, um, Wahid, uh, welcome back. And if uh, the else part is, uh, this string is not matching, what we have typed uh, on the value, then it's going to just say hi in that person name. And then again, uh, we're using the percentage around it to just say this is a batch script variable. So in PowerShell, the same uh, program that you can see, I did the same program so you can see apple and apple comparison. Notice the other one we set the set slash p and then the variable name and then ask for uh, a string to just be displayed to the user so the user know what to type. Here we're writing the read host. Read host, read and this, um, uh, it is actually displays this um, to the user, but it's gonna read the value that the user enters into this variable name. And then the value will be stored to dollar sign name, which is a variable. And then the dollar sign name, which is uh, having this uh, user input, uh, is going to check with the comparison equality with the string Wahid again. And if it is uh, the same, uh, they are uh, uh, the same uh, string, then it's going to write the host, hello Wahid, welcome back. Else it's gonna say hi, and just tell the user's name, whatever was input. And then here is the name that I just ran it uh, with PowerShell example, fdemo2.ps1. Please enter your name and I wrote exactly Wahid. So it says, hello Wahid, welcome back. The F port was true. So it ran this one. 
when I just uh, did the fdemo2.ps1 uh, and I wrote a different name, like full name Wahid Lutfi, even though the first five character match, the rest of them did not match because I'm putting that uh, variable, compare it with only five characters, a string, first letters. Then it's going to run the else part and it says, hi, Wahid Lutfi. So the, you can write any person's name uh, for matching uh, Bill Gates, or um, we can show some examples as well. Uh, finally, let's talk about our um, error handling. Batch scripting uh, does, uh, have, uh, doesn't have does have built-in error handling, uh, although there is something with batch scripting that if error level, you can compare it. But um, on the PowerShell, you have a lot of uh, uh, different mechanisms as well as try and catch errors uh, similar to Python and uh, Java and C and C++. Try and catch is very uh, good uh, for error handling. You are going to um, try something. If um, an exception happens, you catch it on the exception or error. If an error happens, you catch it on error. So uh, notice here, we are doing a try here, the, the try statement. And then the brace uh, within this block, if the number equal to five, then it's gonna execute this one. But if the number is not equal to five, then it's gonna go to a catch, right host and error rocker. So if we are expecting only to get a five, then we're going to just execute this one. Otherwise we're going to write an error. But notice dollar sign underscore is a special character that is pointing to the, um, PowerShell kind of um, predefined uh, special kind of um, symbols or characters or variables. And this is a variable. Dollar sign underscore is a, a special um, variable that points to the actual error that occurred. No, it's going to just do it. So dollar sign uh, underscore dot name would be just um, the name of the uh, process. For example, if you're looking at the object that you're working that is important. So if you're working on a process, the dollar sign underscore dot name would be the process uh, name, or dollar sign underscore dot PID would be the process ID number, and so on. So this is it for and the um, um, lecture part. Let's go to and the um, part where I can show you um, all the. Example. So I'm going to open a command prompt here. And uh, let me maximize this window also. So I'm going to go to uh, clear screen here and CD2 demo, uh, CD2 programs, and then um, batch script. So clear screen directory store.batch. These are the program that I have uh, for you to demo fdemo1.batch and now you can say type fdemo1.batch and that's basically the uh, numbers uh, comparison. So in this case, if I say um, fdemo1, uh, basically when you're doing this one, you can just give the name of the file without the extension or .batch, it will run it in the same way. So this is uh, within uh, how you run the batch scripting. So now you can see when number is equal five, this is uh, going to display and then echo number is equal to five. So it uh, says uh, number is equal to five and the value of number is equal five because when uh, this comparison ha happens, this uh, ex executed and that's how uh, it was done there. Similarly for the 20, when num is equal 20, uh, right here, when num is equal 20, we uh, get this statement first, then uh, we get the num is equal 20 because I wrote here. And then the last part is says if num is equal five, which is not uh, true. And so it's gonna come to the else part and it's gonna say num is not equal to five, but it is uh, 20. And you can see, but it is 20, so it will uh, work that way. Let me uh, clear my screen again and then uh, do a directory. This time I'm gonna do fdemo2.batch. That script is just to um, undo the screen. So uh, let's do clear screen and then do type. So at this time I'm going to say 
fdemo 2batch is going to say, give me your name. I say Wahid. I run it again. And then it says um, Wahid Lutfi. And then it says, hi, Wahid Lutfi. Notice that when I wrote that string uh, name uh, to be Wahid, Wahid was matched with Wahid. So it says, hello, Wahid, welcome back. And it executed this statement. But when I wrote the Wahid Lutfi, it was uh, coming to um, the else part because the first uh, F statement becomes false and then it returns to the else and then it says, hi, Wahid Lutfi. So let's assume that uh, you're running this one and you gave a different name like Bill Gate. And then you can see that um, hi, Bill Gate. And then if you could just uh, give anybody's name, it doesn't have to be um, famous people. Uh, I'm not famous. But uh, let's just uh, give it to uh, somebody like, uh, uh, like uh, let's say, James Bond, <laughs> really famous. Okay, so it just says, hi, James Bond. God bless him. And then if you just say um, somebody else, let's just go one more. I'm going to just say um, uh, Diego Maradona. And then that's God bless him too, uh, Diego Maradona soccer, uh, best uh, player that I uh, know of. Okay, so uh, let's just go to uh, the next example. I'm going to clear the screen and then directory. I'm going to go to the PowerShell. CD to the PowerShell. And then as you can see, I have these two programs. So I'm going to uh, demonstrate this one also, type fdemo1.ps1. So notice that if you just run this one, because I'm on a Windows, if I just run it, say, dot slash f demo one dot ps1, it's going to just open it in Notepad because they think that I'm just opening this uh, file because I'm on a uh, shell, uh, I mean, bat um, command line. So I, I need to go to PowerShell in order to uh, just execute that statement. Now I run that one, say, F and demo one dot ps1 as you can see my prompt is now PowerShell so and now I can run PowerShell commands and then that's uh, I'm going to run the batch script there so type uh, F demo one dot ps1 it is there and then um, the next thing I'm going to do a clear screen again here and then do there this time I'm going to say dot slash um, F and demo 2.ps1. And then I say Wahid, and then it's going to say the same thing. So notice you can give the, without the extension as well, because it knows uh, that it's a PowerShell program. So I could say Wahid Lottery, and then um, here say, um, let's say, um, uh, we're going to say, uh, David, just say hi, David. Um, anybody that you could uh, say is Mortazo, my son. So um, uh, let's let's just look at the um, F statement here. The type F demo two dot ps one. This one, as you can see, the name of the script is um, going to be uh, just uh, F demo dot uh, ps one get dash execute execution and then uh, you can see that get dash execution policy it says remote sign if i did not have the uh, execution policy uh, to remote sign, I would not be able to run those PowerShell programs. Okay, so this was it for this video. I hope uh, that does it. Uh, I hope you basically are going to um, go to our uh, uh, YouTube channel, which is my web university, free educational videos. And then uh, you watch all these videos and enjoy it and learn it and make some comments. And um, just uh, let me know what else you need. I'll make uh, new videos for you. Okay. Um, 
And then this is also my webuniversity.com that I'm just um, posting a lot of uh, the videos here uh, as well. So uh, you're welcome to watch it on YouTube or just if you're learning Unix and Linux and uh, just go to my website, the entire book, I have it on uh, PDF format. And then uh, just um, the entire book is basically available online for you. And you can also uh, get Linux and Windows uh, command lines uh, help uh, from it. So like, for example, if you're looking for the F statement that we just covered today, I'm going to say um, help, uh, help PDF. This is for uh, Windows PDF uh, help. So I wrote the entire things in a PDF file format. And then you can see here the F statement is there. You can just click on it and then uh, start learning the F statement there. With, um, this PDF and it explains all of that one. The uh, comparison that we were talking about earlier, uh, I showed you already. So this is good that uh, I have this one online. You don't have to be sitting in front of a Windows machine. All you need is an internet in a browser and then you can and just and do this comparison or uh, reading and uh, understanding or watch the videos. For example, here, I did not discuss the exist um, files, but the syntax is the same. If exist file name, then you're going to do a delete file name else the file name is missing. So the um, a lot of the syntax here that are there is similar to um, what we discussed, all the equality symbols, everything. So. You're welcome to read these man pages, uh, our help pages uh, from my website for free. It's all posted there. And if you want uh, PowerShell commands also, let me just uh, show you man underscore PDF. I have also uh, have made documentation for you for um, man underscore pages for um, Windows, uh, PowerShell, Solaris, Linux, Unix, there's about 66,000 technical documentation. So you could come in and search for any manual pages, any technical documentation on Unix, Linux, Mac, Windows, and PowerShell. It's all in one side. Uh, one side. Mywebuniversity.com slash man pages. And they are in uh, alphabetical, but if you are looking for any one of them, you can go, go here and just uh, read them here. Or uh, sometimes like, for example, let's say you go on PowerShell. If you uh, need to do it, it's more than 2000 technical documentation here. So uh, you could get uh, the PowerShell help also. For example, let's say you say get partition. What does that do? It shows you in a very nice format with more examples and everything there. Any one of them that you're interested, just read and practice it on your uh, Windows machine. Similarly, if you want to do a uh, Unix stuff, I have that one as technical documentation as well. So uh, like if you see man underscore pages, um, actually um, we could say um, man underscore PDF. This man PDF is also similarly for Windows that we did. I did um, all the uh, about 6,600 uh, something uh, PDF documentation available for you online for all the section one, section two, section three. You can see here section one manual pages. All of these are available for you online. Like for example, let's say you wanna see a set, you just click a stream editor and then it will just give you a PDF version for that one and you start reading it and understand it and uh, practice it. So you are welcome to read this one. The, the nice thing about this one is not for section one only, section two, section three, section four, section five, section eight, and section six, seven, nine, all of them. All nine sections are available right on the fingertips of your um, browser. You can just use a browser and go to, through them and then just uh, read them. Notice that uh, all of these are available, okay? So um, please use this website. It's very useful for schools and education and 
um, um, people are talking about uh, chat GPT and other ones. This is similarly, uh, you can just get thousands of thousands of thousands of technical documentation. 66,000 uh, technical documentation was on that manual pages. 6,000 is this manual pages right here. And there's an additional, you can also search query by, by whatever you want. So like, for example, you're looking for a particular one, you're not just going there on that sorting order and then do a control F search. You can also go here search for Unix manual pages um, and there, you can just uh, click on it and then uh, just type in the command that you wanna search for. For example, let's say I'm looking for um, a PS3, processes stream three. And then if uh, you just are looking at it and right here, be a process stream th uh, three. And you're looking for like, let's say Python, it is just uh, there. Again, this is uh, available uh, for an HTML format as well as manual pages of that one, which I showed you here, man PDF. So when you come in here and you say, uh, let me just control F here and say Python, search for Python and then Python three comes in here. You can see Python 2 is there, Python 3 is there. Each one of them, depending on which one uh, you want to open, I have the PDF for you available online. So you can use even your cell phone to browse it. There's no authentication, no login like chat and other ones. Chat GPT, unfortunately, is trying to uh, just, um, they, they are doing great stuff. Uh, not, not, don't get me wrong, but when, when they're just not providing it for free to just um, developers and other ones, every uh, time that they say, oh, it is not gonna be available for you uh, unless you just pay $20 a month, that's not good. That uh, people will not use it because there are a lot of other search engines like Google's and other ones that are much, much uh, kind of intuitive. Uh, you're welcome to just search ChatGPT or Google or some search engine uh, or uh, just come into this site. In particular, if you're looking for Unix and Windows, I have a lot of stuff in here at mywebuniversity.com. And then if you're looking for like um, general to uh, give you information about food, about um, diet, about sports, about everything, as long as they're uh, before 2021, ChatGPT is your friend use chat GPT, but chat GPT has a, a, its own limitation. It uh, is not sometimes um, giving you exact answer. Sometimes it is uh, kind of misleading. Sometimes it's kind of uh, false. And sometimes it is information that is displayed that are um, not kind of, um, it's a little bit biased. Like I was asked, looking for who won the World Cup of 2022, which is Argentina, they were just listed as uh, France. But as we train chat GPT, eventually it will get better and better. So it is not a, a model that you could just say is 100% better than everything else. It's not a replacement for anything. It's a replacement for itself. And it is going to be um, a great um, kind of uh, product uh, in the future, as well as now it is. But uh, ChatGPT, people are just talking about it every day. I don't think that it is uh, just um, kind of a product that you could say, well, it's going to replace anything else. It is uh, going to uh, be another technology that is going to uh, save a lot of um, uh, kind of uh, headache for people, especially for developers and for technical people that they can get data. But their data is relying on uh, up to 2021, which and that is a limitation. Later on, it's going to get better. And also the fact that it is going to be available, that's also going to help. So um, also, even if you want to just uh, watch my chat GPT, I talked about a lot of the benefits of it. I haven't talked about uh, any aspect of, of why there are some limitation. Hopefully, the limitation will go away. And then uh, people could uh, use it because a, a lot of uh, the stuff uh, in chat GPT is also very, very um, informative, very helpful as well. So uh, take care. God bless you all. 
have fun and enjoy your life. Bye.